Hi guys, I'm in London right now for my two month long classical music pilgrimage. I'll be starting off in London um, with the BBC Proms and the Kleinborn Festival before heading off to Europe for a few more festivals which I will be filming for you guys. But today let's talk about the Kleinborn Festival. What do you think about when you hear the word opera? An elegant evening out in fancy dresses and black tie. Soprano voices so high could break glasses. A night that just won't end because the fat lady won't stop singing. Well, some of those are true actually and Kleinborn is the embodiment of traditional country house opera festival. It's not the same as attending opera in city opera houses like in Vienna State Opera, Prague State Opera, La Scala in Milan or The Met in New York. And in this video, I will be taking you to Kleinborn and let you see for yourself what's so special about Kleinborn. The Kleinborn Festival is held every year between the month of May until August in a country house near Lewis in East Sussex in the UK. And it's been this way ever since 1934, so almost 90 years now. It's only missed a couple of years in the World War II era. But you might have noticed that I stressed the word festival, and that's because in the autumn, they also hold another autumn festival, but that one is a bit more casual, a bit more relaxed, and it's not the festival that people think about when they hear the word Kleinborn. When people hear the word Kleinborn, they think about the summer festival that I will be taking you to with me today. Well, it's an opera festival, so basically you choose which performance you want to go and you buy a ticket in advance and on the day you just go there and enjoy the performance, that's it. But there is one really special thing about Kleinborn and that's the picnic. And it's raining now actually, so let's get out of High Park and out of London and follow me to Kleinborn. If you're traveling from London, then the train is from Victoria Station heading towards the direction of Eastbourne and you see a lot of people carrying picnic hampers on this train. Once you get there, there'll be a coach waiting right in front of the station to pick you up to take you to Glyndebourne and please pre-book this as it's usually fully booked. The journey takes about 15 minutes and now we've arrived and right away you see people setting up camps for their picnics and some have pre-booked their tables, which is a wise thing to do. There was about two hours free time before the first curtain up, so I walked around and the bell rang and it's time to go inside. Well, inside is your standard modern horseshoe shaped opera house and we got a full house that night and the orchestra was warming up ready for the first act. And after about two hours of act one, we now have the interval. During this time, you can grab a drink or food if you didn't bring your own picnic. And then you can find a spot you like somewhere and enjoy your interval with an amazing view of Glyndebourne and British summer weather, that is, if it's not raining. It can get a bit chilly and windy though, so it's wise to bring a cardigan and a hat. And interval isn't just for eating, there are a lot of things to explore in Glyndebourne, like this organ room with lots and lots of books on classical music and even a vintage full score of Mozart's Don Giovanni and even an art exhibition. And at around 8pm we went back in and enjoyed the rest of Act 2 which was amazing. Hi guys, so I'm at Glyndebourne right now, picnicking during the interval. I have some time, so let's talk about what makes attending an opera here so special and different from attending it at any other city opera house, say, Royal Opera House at Covent Garden. At city opera houses like the Royal Opera House, you can choose to attend a matinee, which usually starts around 2, 2.30 p.m. or an evening performance, which usually starts 6, 6.30, depending on the opera. Um, if it's Wagner's, then it might start a little bit earlier so that it can finish by 10 p.m. because some of the operas can last five hours in total. But here, like today, the performance will start at 4.50 p.m. And because Kleinborn does shorter operas, you know, two three hours top 
you may ask why does it have to start so early and that's because they have to allow time for the long interval which brings me to my next point Glyndebourne is notorious for having long interval it's 90 minutes yeah one and a half hour and that's intentional because they want to allow time for a picnic and a full course meal and that's different from city opera houses where interval would just last 30 to 45 minutes you know just enough time for a glass of champagne or some finger food definitely not enough for a full course meal and if you are coming here during the autumn festival then the interval would be shorter as well you know i look around today and i see a lot of black tie and full length dresses and it's really nice so black tie is often de rigueur at country house opera which is different from city opera where you can wear a more casual clothing and by the way if you're coming here during the autumn festival um, you can wear more casual clothing as well but having said that you know they have put it on their website that it's not the rule and you should wear what makes you comfortable which has always been my philosophy when dressing up for opera because I try to dress nicely enough to show that I respect the establishment and the atmosphere and the people sitting next to me and as long as I've done that then I think the rest is about the art it's about whether you understand what the composer is trying to say because at the end of the day you know it's more important to show up for the art rather than for vanity and I think it's now time for me to go back in and enjoy the rest of my performance today I'm seeing a captivating deeply psychological piece by Francis Poulenc called Dialogue of the Carmelites which actually I've made two in-depth analysis videos so check them out if you're interested and I will see you in my next video